Hello and welcome to the finale of our photo mode series. Previously, we've worked on our camera setup with our camera roll, we're taking the pictures and exporting these pictures out into our file system. In this last episode, we're going to go through and show how to set up filters for your photos. So you can apply different post process filters to your images and export these as well on top of your actual in images into your pictures folders. So let's begin. So what we're going to do to allow us to change different filters on the camera is set up post processes that our camera can actually use. So we'll have some basic ones, but obviously you can do as many as you like. Now the first one we're going to do is a desaturation. Now to do a post process volume material, it's going to set up a folder first of all here for it. Post process or quick filters, whatever you want. Um, and in here, we're going to create the material for our post process and we'll call this one uh, filter underscore desaturation. Now desaturation is a really easy one to do. So we'll start with this one first. So first thing we'll do is change the material domain from surface to post process. So you find that in the material domain down here on the left. And then what we have to do is get the actual image from the renderer, which is got from scene texture node. When you select the scene texture node, you can go to the left hand side details panel and choose what scene texture you want to use. Now default is going to be scene color, but for post processing, we want to use the post process input zero. This will just grab whatever it's rendering on the screen like normal onto here. So for example, if I plug the color into here, we can see the full image in all its glory. Now if I want it to be rendering out like normal, um, this will be fine, but I want it to be desaturated. So I'm going to take this color here and do the node for desaturation. And then plug that in. Now the default for this is that it's going to desaturate pretty much the entirety of it. But this fraction here you can customize to whatever you like. So for example, if we put in a single variable here. Shortcut for that by the way is holding down one and left click. So zero means there can be no desaturation. And then one means full desaturation. So you can customize how that looks if you wish to manipulate that in some way. Uh, but for now, we'll leave that as is, as I quite like that as it is. So there's desaturation for filter. Now we're gonna make another one for sepia. I'm gonna duplicate this and we'll do filter underscore sepia. And in here, we're gonna keep it desaturated, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, a, a slight tint to it. So to do a tint, you just multiply the output of this by a color. And for sepia, we're gonna multiply it by a sort of a yellowy brown color. And to do color, you hold down three, left click to create the color node or a three vector node at least. So black is default, but we're gonna change it to sort of a browny orange sort of color. And if you click okay, you can see it turn into that sort of color there. Uh, and we can just tweak this to get however we want. I'm not a phot photograph expert, so I don't know exactly what kind of colors you want to use. Uh, but you get the gist of it. That's what we want to use for this. Okay. You may darken the edges of it as well if you want. I don't know. Um, we multiply that again by, or power it. Power of two, for example. It'll make it darker. Uh, well, that'll be fine. Okay. So that's our sepia tone. Okay, so we've got desaturation and sepia. Now I'm gonna make another one uh, of desaturation. So I'm gonna duplicate this one again. But this one is gonna be plain. So this could be like as it is by normal standard. So we'll do normal. So filter underscore normal. With that duplicate, just go into normal and remove the desaturation. So we just see the normal color go straight through, no problem. So we've got normal. Desaturation and sepia. So all three of these we're going to put into an array on our camera for our photo. We go to the photo camera pawn. And we're going to go to the variables down here on the left. And in here we're going to have, call this one filters. And this is going to be an array of materials. So we're going to search for a material uh, option. And that'd be an object reference. And you're going to change that to be an array. And in here in the filters, we can then add each of these arrays to the screen. So if I go to here, I can add in here filter and do normal as zero. Then add another one. 
filter and do desaturation and another one for filter and do uh, sepia okay so we got those three set up for that so for that to allow us to cycle through that i'm going to set up a very basic input system to allow us to do this at the moment we've got left mouse button doing the actual rendering of the target but what i'm wanting to do instead is i want it to have another input on here to switch between these different materials so we're going to do with right mouse button and that's going to just cycle through them So as we're cycling through them, we're going to need to keep track of which filter we currently have active. So we're going to make another variable, and that's going to be an integer called current filter index. And if I could spell it correctly, that would help. Let's just make fix that. And that would be a integer single variable like that. And that'll start at zero. Um, that'll be the first one in the list. So when you click the mouse, right mouse button, what we're going to do is we're going to take the current filter index and add one to this. And then we're going to take out the filters array and check to see if this is a valid index. So do valid index and plug this in. So does that number exist in the array? If it doesn't, we want it to re reset back to zero. If it does, no problem, just carry on. So what we're going to do with this boolean on this side of things, we're going to do select int. And this will allow us to do, if it is true, it'll do A and false, it'll do B. So if it is valid, great, we'll use the valid number on there. But if it isn't valid, we'll make it cycle back down to zero, like so. Then we just drag out current filter index and set it to that. So pressing right mouse button will just cycle that number through and through. We then want to tell which filter we want to use. Now for this, we're going to drag out our scene capture component 2D because in here, you will have in here the post process material section somewhere. Uh, oh, I lost it. Hang on. Let's just search for it. Post uh, process rendering features, post process material. Okay. So we want this setting. We need to change this. So we're going to take out our scene capture component 2D and in there we're going to get hold of our uh, post process settings. So do post and you'll see get post process settings. Now in here, I just close this, um, we can take this and we can do set members in post process setting. Now here you'll see all the options we had available to us inside of that setting uh, for the camera and one of them will be our post process materials so you go to rendering features uh, down here post process materials and tick that as a pin and now we've got post process materials as an input on this we're going to take this out and we're going to do make and then from this array we're going to um set array uh no sorry we're going to uh do make array there we go do make array um so make array in zero is going to be the first one so in here we're going to put in our uh filters so you go filters get and this one, you know, drag this out and we'll do make weighted blender. So here you have a weight of minus one, which basically means no weight whatsoever, it'll just play it as full. And the object can be the actual material we want to plug into this. So the filters, you can do get, and you'll plug in the current filter index into there. And that will go into object. So that is going to get set into there, set into the make weighted blendables, and then go into post process materials, send it onto the members of this thing. It just sets it onto there. We then want to change the make weight blended or weight here from minus one to just one. So it uses that object reference as its post process material. Okay, so that is the scene capture component, but we want to be able to preview this in the game as we're playing it. So what we're going to do is we also do the same the same thing, but for the camera now instead. 
So it'd be pretty much exactly the same. We're going to take all this stuff here and we're going to copy that and we're going to take our camera out and do exactly the same. So we're going to get post process settings. We're then going to set members in post processing state. We're going to tick on our rendering or post process materials. And that will go into this make weighted blended. We then want to put in the object and the weight here or object mostly, and that'd be the filters. And we're going to do get plug that into there. And then for the number, it'll be the current filter index. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to then set the post process settings back to the camera and back to the scene capture component. So we're going to take the scene capture component here, do set post process materials, or post process settings rather, and plug that into the struct out for there. And in here, we're going to do exactly the same for after this. So set post process settings. and put that in there like that okay and that's all we have to do here now we should be able to see our game rendering this in our screen so if i push right mouse button with desaturation sepia back to normal okay so we can cycle between these things but if i take the picture like this it'll come up and you can see the picture isn't yet got that post process applied to it so if you want it to apply the post process to the capture as well all we have to do is go into our capture settings for our scene capture component. Go down here where we've got the scene capture settings. You'll see the option for always persist rendering state. Tick that to be true. Now, when you push the button to play and we go into camera view and I switch it over to sepia, for example, and hit left click, you'll take the picture and now get that nice sepia tone. And that will now appear in our menu as well. So if I click on this, it's going to save it. And I can close the gallery, come out of there, check my save file, and we can see our picture all done there in a sepia tone. And there we have it. That's the end of our photo mode series. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's have shown the support and donated through patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Remember, if you're a gold patron, you get access to these project files so you can tinker around with it yourself and use it for your own projects as you wish. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.